Commissioner, I would make a consideration of claims to be paid.
Thank you. I now like to call the March 17, 2020 regular council meeting of the Riverton City Council to order at 7 p.m. We will have Councilman Larson give us the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation by Councilman Rhoda. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, its many offerings and blessings. We ask that you please give us guidance in this time, um, navigating these unknown waters that many of us are in the middle of. Uh, Lord, we just want to thank you for every day and uh, each one that you bring us. And uh, we, we thank you and ask for wisdom at this time. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you for that prayer and that pledge. Appreciate it. Would the city clerk please conduct roll call? Yes, Your Honor. Councilwoman Carla Borders. Here. Councilman Tim Hancock. Here. Councilman Mike Bailey. Here. Councilman Rebecca Schatza. Here. Councilman Kyle Larson. Here. Councilman Corey Rhoda. Here. Mayor Richard Gard. Here. I declare a quorum is present. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with the addition of the consent agenda to ratify the action taken on March 16th, 2020, emergency council meeting related to the city operations. So moved. So moved. Second. Councilman Larson has the motion and Councilwoman Chatza has a second. Any further discussion? Where I do the finance. Okay, no. not yet. In a second, though. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. <clears throat> Communication from the floor. Uh, anyone in the audience wishing to address the council regarding an item that is scheduled for public hearing will be given the opportunity to speak during that public hearing. Anyone wishing to address the council on any other issue issue may speak now. I would ask that those individuals who wish to address the council at this time to approach the podium and identify yourself for the record. Hello, I am Bethany Baldus and I promise to be quick. <laughs> Um, I am the founder of a Facebook page called Local Ladies and on Sunday night I made out a uh, just a quick little post asking if anybody needed help um, to please contact me and I'd do anything in my power to help them. Um, what I got from that was 30 volunteers. And so in expected Riverton spirit, we have a lot more help than um, needs at this point. Um, I've teamed up with the Wind River Radio Network, County 10, the Ranger, Jack FM, and um, we're all going to be working together to get information out. They, um, Wind River Radio Network has a link that we're putting all of the volunteers in for, um, uh, for people to be able to be in a clearinghouse rather than me having my own list, them having their own list, and everybody going in different directions so that when the city, when the police department, when anybody may need something, um, we're able to act quickly and efficiently and with the least <coughs> amount of exposure um, to everybody else. Um, so there's a link on the Wind River Radio Network um, Facebook, and that will then go down to me and then Brett Watson, um, who has the Facebook page, River 10 Above and Beyond, is also helping in this. Um, right now, the place that I have identified that needs the most help um, is Eagles Hope. They um, have communal living there, and um, when I was talking to Michelle earlier, they don't have any hand sanitizer. Um, so if people have extra hand, and it's unavailable in the stores most of the time, so if anybody has extra things of hand sanitizer, um, simple foods to make, ramen, um, different kinds of canned foods would also be appreciated. Um, and then they, they do have a system set up to be able to, um, if somebody gets ill, what they're going to do so that they can keep everybody on the grounds um, safe. Um, 
I just, I can't say enough how amazing it is to just be looking for people who need help and get so many more volunteers. And um, I hope that on the day that we get done with all of this and everything opens back up, that we're able to continue this little network that we've created and really have it be a moving, moving forward stone. And um, just like how we can stay connected and um, be who we're going to be. Um, and I think that's it. Bethany, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I used your services already today as, as a helping hands. Uh, is it all right if we give your phone number out? Yes, so you can give my phone number. There's also um, the phone number of 840-3665. Um, and then my email address is bethanybaldus at gmail.com. You can get, rid of, get a hold of um, the Wind River Radio Network through their, their little link. Um, what is I should have looked it up. Forward. Yeah, 10 Forward, yep. Yeah. 10 Forward is their page. No, it's Fremont Forward. Fremont Forward. Fremont Forward. Fremont Forward. Um, and I then. The link is yotoday.com slash 10 Forward. 10 Forward. It is. Yep, 10 Forward. <laughs> so um, that is that is where you can go to volunteer. You can also ask for help there. And then that, then that information is going to come down. Um, I, last I heard, there were between 60 and 100 people who had volunteered through um, my ask and through their ask. And um, by golly, we'll figure out whatever we need to figure out. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, uh, have you had anybody ask for assistance yet? Um, except for Eagles Hope. That's all that I've been able to contact. But I'm also, it's I'm finding this more difficult than normal because typically you can get people together and then go out, which we can't really be doing that. So um, it's trying to identify. Um, I think from what I've found is just getting a hold of those people that you know might need help. I went to a neighbor's house, a former neighbor's house today. Um, she was heavy on my mind, and I just went and knocked on her door, stepped back however many steps, and um, just made sure she had all of the essentials and that she was okay. Um, I think she's probably more bored right now than anything else. So um, <laughs> I, I think that that's kind of where people are. So just finding those people who are in need. Um, we do have um, a location that is willing to take in donations. And so what I'm kind of hoping is that we can have some drop places within the community that then we can take that to that secure location. Um, and then our volunteers would be able to get stuff from there. Uh, so Mayor, the main reason I ask is my concern is that most of the people who will need the assistance are probably not Facebook or internet friendly. Yes. Um, I know there was talk at one time about maybe going door to door. I realize that's probably a bad call right now. Uh, maybe there's a way you could say the end of the week people could set recommendations to hey this person might need checked on or things like that by the end of the week I hope to have a solution to that so um, I I um, am hoping to be able to do some kind of a campaign like thing um, to be able to go check on all the people in need it's just figuring out how to do it safely so you're not transmitting possible disease from house mailman to house going to every house yes maybe through a mailman you know you guys <laughs> so your honor I was wondering if the police department could help with that because we we have interaction with the public continually anyway so maybe we could help with that we'd appreciate that yeah and I've sp I've spoken with um, Captain Todd Byerly and so him and I are in communication so yeah okay like great 100 percent okay I would suggest too that maybe you could contact the churches in, yep. in town and you probably pick up more volunteers than people to help but yes. they might have an idea of some people that need help um, so that's another um, recommendation. There's only 24 hours in a day, and I'm trying to utilize all of them. But um, if churches can um, call through their prayer chains and just find out if there's any help, um, they do have a lot of access. And um, honestly, we need to be using that phone. Um, we all have a one. Let's not just get on Facebook, but using our phone numbers and calling the people um, is a really, really safe way to be able to just check on people. So, um, so churches, and then t by tomorrow morning, I hope to have a, um, a press release out kind of laying out what my plan is. And really what my focus is, is to be of assistance, not a hindrance. So I want things to kind of be organized so that if the chief of police calls, we're able to act quickly and get what 
is needed to a person rather than there being a whole bunch of layers of stuff in between. So we appreciate your efforts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we'll, I'm already selling it. Well, good. I Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And I'm going to go home and watch from online for social distancing safety. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Seeing no others, uh, would the city clerk please read the consent, consent agenda items only? Yes, Your Honor. Approval of the minutes, March 3rd, 2020, regular council meeting. Approval of the minutes, March 10th, 2020, council goal setting work session. Approval of the minutes, March 17th, 2020, finance committee meeting. Approval of the finance committee recommendations for March 17th, 2020. Approval of the municipal court report for the month of February, 2020 and approval to ratify the action taken at the emergency meeting on March 16th, 2020. Are there any items for further discussion? Yes, Your Honor. The Finance Committee met this evening and um, we moved to pay uh, consideration of claims to be paid in the amount of $291,494.64 manual checks in the amount of $2,443.68, payroll and liabilities in the amount of $458,747.87, for a total of $752,686.19. We also passed a motion to, um, to use senior endowment funds for the senior center to replace one of their ovens that is a fire hazard and it's been tagged. Um, so uh, that was for the amount up to $12,000 to replace. The, um, the oven itself is around 10,000 and then it's gonna be around 2,000 to uh, install and do the electrical work. Super, thank you. You're welcome. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. So moved. Second. <coughs> Your Honor. Yes. I'll abstain from the Bailey Enterprises items on the Finance Committee meeting. <coughs> okay. Well noted. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed say nay. Motion passes. This next item, number nine, is... is um, kind of a personal thing that I have. Um, I mentioned a few meetings back that um, I came for my Monday night mayor's um, meeting and and I was sitting there by myself and uh, I got a knock on my door and there's a gentleman and he said, could you help me find my two dogs? And I said, well, I suppose I could. <laughs> well, what do you know about him? He said, well, the police called and said they have my dogs. Now, over the years, I've made an analogy to the fact that policing isn't what it used to be as it gets along with the, with the private sector, with the, with the people in the community. Because when I was a little boy, we had a really nice dog. And uh, one day, Mel Matthews, who was the police chief, pulled up in front of our house and opened the door. He knew the dog's name. And he said, Gabe, get out and stay home. And, and that was always kind of a fun spot to know that the p chief of police was interested enough to bring my dog home. And so when I got up from my desk, I, I said, I can get you in touch with the police department. And we went down and picked up the phone and, and they let us in. And sure enough, here was this gentleman's two dogs. Now this was late at night and in the dark. And we had an officer who, uh, who stopped and saw two dogs that needed help and he grabbed both of them and loaded them in his car and he came back to the station. It was after hours, our animal control officer wasn't there. He called the numbers and made arrangements to uh, not incarcerate the dogs, but to get them back to their owners. And so I thought that was really special and I appreciate it. I know the owner did. He was really tickled to get his two dogs back. And so all of us that have dogs, which I think are a number of us that really do like their dogs that I see on posts every once in a while, people that like their dogs. Um, I know that we appreciate that. And so this is a certificate of appreciation 
that certifies as a, a proud recipient to, to Brandon Brookover, acknowledging and thanking you for the daily effort, for your daily efforts, for your dedication, for your integrity, for your willingness to go the extra mile, and for your positive, uh, for your optimism, which contributes to the, su the success of Riverton, Wyoming. Um, Officer Brookover is here tonight, and I'd like to present him with this. If you'd come forward to the podium, I'll meet you there. Thank you. <clears throat> that may seem like a small item, but it really isn't. Those officers are extremely busy. They got a lot of things to do. The dog was in the middle of the road and uh, was eventually going to get hit. And so I do appreciate his efforts, and I know all of our police officer, police officers are of that quality, and I'm just, I'm just glad to be associated with them. <clears throat> we'll move on to um, item number 10, public hearing and consideration of resolution number 1411, the half cent tax to support economic development. Um, the chair would entertain a motion to Take the resolution number 1411 from the table. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Larson and a second by Councilwoman Schatza. Any further discussion? Your Honor? Yes. Uh, does it contain the uh, language which we didn't have last time that the two attorneys uh, wrestled over and uh, felt that it would, so that we would uh, need to resolve that. Your Honor. Yes. Um, Councilman, yes, but right now we're only taking it off the table. Um, but yes, we've we've adjusted the language accordingly. I it needs to be consistent. We have another spot for that discussion. But Very good. this is just to pull the table up. So um, the item has been tabled, and it's now motions to pick it up off the table. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Motion on the table was made by Councilman Bailey and seconded by Councilwoman Schatza to approve resolution number 1411. Would the city clerk Please read resolution number 1411 by title only. Yes, Your Honor. Proposed resolution number 1411, a resolution to place the one half percent sales and use tax for economic development question on the primary election ballot. Thank you. Now we're at a point where we can have further discussion. So Kyle has good, um, a good question. Can I call people, Kevin and Gary, would you guys like to address us on that subject? Could you guys acknowledge yourself for the wide audience that's watching? Sure can. Your Honor, members of the council, my name is Kevin Kershisnik with ID Inc., Economic Development Entity here in the city of Riverton on the uh, one half sales, one half percent sales tax team. Thank you. And Gary Michaud, the administrator for the Fremont County Association of Governments. Glad to have you guys. Thank you, Mayor. The question was asked, is the, is the verbiage that we're passing tonight, is it correct to what you'd like to have passed? Your Honor, yes, it is. We run it by legal, and the city of Lander, as well as the city of Riverton, worked in collaboration for this effort. And we recently received approval from legal that it has the correct verbiage in there as needed by state statute. We did forward this on to the county to have their attorney look at it as well. We have not received response back from them at this point. Uh, when they 
they provided the initial verbiage, and so we do not anticipate any issues with it, but we do not have that at this point. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, Your Honor, I'd like to just add to uh, this resolution, the exact same resolution was approved by the City of Lander last week and um, has also passed the first uh, approval from the legals from all the municipalities around the county. Uh, it still has to go to the rest of them, but we have those all scheduled for the rest of the month, so we're in good shape there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions that you guys might have? Uh, Mayor, I just have one. Um, so one question that was brought to me was uh, with the Wind River Transportation Association, is it $1 to go the whole ride? Is that correct? Um, Your Honor and Councilman Rhoda, that is correct. Um, if I could just add a little bit, though, the way that our grant uh, is designed that we receive from the state, um, they sub that's called fare, bo fare box. So they take that and subtract that amount, whatever fare box we receive from uh, our expenses before they reimburse us. So regardless whether we charge a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars, it's still going to be the same for us. It's not going to affect the bottom line. And then just uh, point two is, you know, a dollar doesn't seem like a lot, but we do have, if you look at our, our ridership and the people mm -hmm. that ride the WRTA, sometimes that can be pretty hard for them to come up with. I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a public hearing on this on my agenda. Kristen, do we need it? Your Honor, we had a public hearing at the last meeting, and we just simply removed it from the table. If there was anyone from the public that wanted to speak, um, now would be the time to do that. Okay, Lance, that's you. No? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, I don't... Okay. I, I guess we don't need Seeing one. how it was written, I thought we might. So. I just write. I just read what they wrote. <laughs> Has anybody on the council gotten any feedback on this? I think people have had a lot of other things on their mind than this. That was the only question I had was about the dollar. Aside from that, it seems well accepted. Well, I guess the other thing to say here is this isn't, and, and we want to make that really clear to the public, that we aren't voting for a tax increase. What we are voting for here is to give you, the electorate, the opportunity to um, study that out and, and decide if you want to support a tax increase. Um, Mayor Gard, uh, my opinion is that it's a good idea. You may see that differently, and so I would encourage you to look at that and, and uh, make those choices. Uh, once again, what, what this tax would do is it would fund money to support the airport, it would fund money to support WRTA's transportation, it would leave a large sum of money into um, the county, the cities, Lander, um, Riverton, Pavilion, Dubois, um, Shoshone, Hudson, that would, that would be a sizable sum. Uh, Riverton would be somewhere around $600,000 a year. Uh, Dubois would be around 57000 a year. Am I getting close to these numbers? Um, and so, you know, Dubois is at that same crossroad. They don't use the bus. The bus doesn't go up there. They, they have an airport that maybe is a little bit um, bigger than Riverton. But we, we feel like we're closer and have more amenities, so we'd really like Dubois people to come use our airport. We got, we got all the goods now. We got great fares, and we would like them to use our airport. And so Shoshone would be in there. Shoshone would get a sizable bump increase. And so um, we would like everybody to research that and come to a point of if they can support that, it would be on the ballot on the primary election. Is that correct? And so um, that would be the place that we would actually put the vote out to the public. And today's vote is only approving the resolution so it can be carried to the county commissioners for their support. If they're unwilling to support, um, we have a ballot initiation that we have to get 780 signatures. 728. 728 to put it on the, on the ballot. So there's other ways to do that. But at, at the point right now, I believe that all the municipalities are in support is the last I understood from FTAG, and so we hope to see the, all of them pass that resolution and move it on to the county. 
clear as mud? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, <coughs> if there's no further discussion, the chair would entertain the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Consideration of resolution number 1412, fiscal year 2020 2021, council goals. City administrator's report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. On the 10th of this month, council met in work session and reviewed the goals from this last year. At that same time, we worked and developed the, exist, the, the goals that you see before you. Some of those are unchanged with one addition, which is and some rearrangement. Those items, uh, if adopted, will serve as guiding principles for staff as we work through and that we will track those accordingly. Um, throughout the year, these are proposed slightly different with less subcategories. It doesn't mean that the subcategories do not exist. It means that we use them as a focal, the main titles as a focal point for our discussions and for our overall effort. Staff will still be tracking the subpoints and those subpoints may be modified throughout the year. At this point, it would seem a little redundant since everybody here was already in the meeting when we did this for me to go over those in terrible detail. That being said, uh, it is recommended that these are recommended for approval and we would be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to approve resolution number 1412. So moved. Second. Councilman Schatza has the motion. Councilwoman Borders has the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes. Airport lease agreement, Riverton Local Food Hub fee waiver extension request. Public Works Director's report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, staff is asking the City Council to consider the request made by the Riverton Local Food Hub. As you remember, last August, the Local Food Hub uh, entered into an agreement with the City of Riverton to operate the kitchen and cafe space at the uh, Riverton Re Regional Airport Terminal. The lease uh, term began in September, however, due to a challenge in receiving permits from the Wyoming Department of Agriculture. The local food hub really didn't begin operations until October of 2019. Prior to the hub's occupancy of the kitchen and cafe, the city of Riverton invested um, just shy of $9,500 in um, making improvements necessary for the cafe and the kitchen to be, opera, uh, to be in an operating position. The lease agreement uh, calls for a monthly fee of $1,000 per month. At the time of approval, the City Council granted a fee waiver for the first six months of the lease agreement. The fee waiver addressed rent fees only. However, it still required the Food Hub to pay $500 per month to cover the cost of utilities. On March 12, 2020, the Food Hub um, submitted a letter to the City Council that is attached in your packet requesting an additional six months of rent waivers. Um, the Food Hub cites um, delays in receiving permits, 501c3 status, and community kitchen engagement from the general public as reasons for uh, the request for extension. As approved, the lease agreement generated or would generate $9,000 in revenue. That's with the six-month waiver of rent. If an additional waiver is granted, the lease will generate $6,000 in the initial term. Uh, we do have a representative from the local food hub here, and uh, I turn the time back to you, Your Honor. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the lease fee waiver extension for the additional six months. So moved. Second. Councilman Larson has the motion, or has the, the motion and, and Councilwoman Shasa has a second. Um, we're going to go to discussion, but Lance, would you have anything to add to us before we do that? 
Thank you, Your Honor. I really don't have anything to add, uh, but I stand for questions. If you had any, do my best to, to answer those. Super. Anybody got a question? No, I don't have a question, but I just want to say that I do appreciate the flexibility in the local food hub, and that's why I want to support them any way that we can. Because if you look, they have been extremely proactive in, in making the decisions that they need to make to, to be successful. So I say this is a good opportunity for us to continue letting them grow and become what they want to be for the community. Appreciate those comments. Anybody else? Kyle? Um, Your Honor, uh, I feel that uh, with the airport there, we need to offer some type of support, supply for the 53 people or 50 or whatever numbers that are coming through. And the only way to do that is to have a food source. And since that food source is coming from a local versus national chain, uh, it's, it's more of a... Um, benefit to the community to operate it than to say, oh, well, I'm missing $9,000. You can't have that. In fact, what that is doing, that it's encouraging people and more from it, more than that, it's familiarizing them with the surroundings and it's an enticement to fly. And that's what we want. Yep. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want in? Um, thanks, Lance. I think Thank you. We're, I, I have a couple concerns with this, and, and, and they're just, um, you know, Jack has done such a wonderful job up there, and he's the heart and soul of, of what's happening at, at the airport. And um, our hours have been reduced to, um, Kyle, can, do you have those hours? I should have asked before I got you on the mic. Your Honor, I will try to speak from memory, but I uh, will definitely defer to Mr. Godey as well. Currently, the local food hub is closed due to um, um, the coronavirus concern. Um, prior to that concern, um, the food hub was restricted to Saturday and Sunday only for the cafe, but uh, daily in the secure area for that counter. And so I, I think that's what I would like to point out, that there's been a lot of effort. I, I think Jack's put in a lot of his own money, actually, to, to be truthful. And so if it's not going to work, I want to quit spending his money. And, and yet I want it to work. So I would, I would hope that everybody, when it resumes uh, its service, that we get up there and, and use it the hours that it's open and, and try to be supportive of that because it really is a good service. And, and we really do have a good thing going. I, too bad we have this virus. We'll talk about that later. But it has our numbers at the airport are unbelievable in my mind for just switching over. And, and we really have great numbers up there. And so um, the food hub is a factor to that. And I just, my only concern is that the personal impact that, that is falling on individuals up there. So yeah. that's my discussion. Your Honor. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say now. I just lost it. Um, Jack has been working really hard up there, and I think one of the hardest things has been the time of year. We've had the last six months, and we've had fall and winter, and people tend to slow down, and they don't travel a lot. And so we want this chance. I am involved with the Food Hub. I have to be honest about that. I'm the vice chair. And um, we, we want to be able to have another six months to see if we can get this thing off the ground. Um, and I think with, with warmer weather, families getting outdoors, that might be feasible. We appreciate that. And we'll make sure we advertise those hours when it opens back up and, and try to get as much help that we can from, from here if you just let us know what to do. Anybody else? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Airport lease agreement for the Riverton Museum. Public Works Director's report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Zach Larson of the Riverton Museum has attended multiple meetings of the airport board to discuss options of having a display in the terminal. The purpose of the display is to promote the Riverton region 
the museum itself and the history of Riverton. On February 21st, 2020, the airport board unanimously passed a motion directing staff to prepare a lease agreement for the, uh, for the museum and to present it to city council for approval. Currently, the city of Riverton leases space in the terminal at a rate of $18 per square foot. However, the city also utilizes a non-commercial rate for community entities. The rate is $1 per year. The purpose of this rate is to promote community amenities that benefit the general public on the whole. It also takes into account the fact that the space occupied by these entities do not directly advertise or promote private commercial activity. For example, the city currently has a lease agreement with the Wind River Visitor Council to display items in the terminal and they have an annual lease of a dollar a year. Uh, in your packet is a um, photo de depiction of the area that the museum would like to occupy. If you picture the terminal, um, there is a vacant pay phone booth. Imagine that. <laughs> and so they would like to improve that area. They will uh, cover the cost of that improvement um, with um, fees provided by the museum. The area will include a, a digital display and then also um, some rack space available for brochures, etc. Um, there is no significant budget impact for the approval of this lease and it is for a term of three years with the option of two uh, renewal periods <coughs> if we can come to a mutual agreement of terms. And I'll turn the time back to the, uh, the chair. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion to approve the lease agreement with the Fremont County Museum System, Riverton Museum. So moved. Second. Councilman Rota has the motion and, and Councilman Hancock has the second. Any further discussion? I don't know what we're going to do for a phone booth. <laughs> what do you think of that? You could probably step into that front and just know. <laughs> <laughs> if we got to take off our uh, isolation booth out of it or something. An isolation booth, that's not a bad <laughs> idea. We could use one of those. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. The motion passes. Do we have a public health director's report tonight? Um, Your Honor, we didn't. I don't know. Maybe because we had a meeting last night and he did speak, uh, Dr. Gee did speak at the time, maybe he assumed that that, met the, that that was moved at some point. I just spoke to him at 6 o'clock. <coughs> I can fill that in. So We'll, we'll go to, to my comments. Um, let's move on to um, committee reports and um, council committee reports and, and council roundtable. Oh, hey, Mike, would you join? Join us on that? Sure. So obviously it's been a very lively week in the city of Riverton. Um, but I guess, I, again, I would just, again, I think it was impressive that, uh, you know, the people in the community are still volunteering to help other people. And I think that's important in this time that we are going through. And like I said last night, you know, I hope that we all follow the instructions that we've been given, but yet do not overreact to the situation and don't just start hoarding toilet paper and whatever other, you know, hand sanitizer that they can't find anywhere and all that kind of stuff. Because the CDC directions actually say washing your hands with soap and water is better than using hand sanitizer. So I'll bet we all got some of that stashed away somewhere. Um, so again, I think, you know, we, we need to be cautious and follow the, the things that have been set before us, but yet not panic and overreact and make a bigger deal to this. And, and we will get through this and we will get through it positively. And I have 100% faith in Riverton and Fremont County that we'll pull together and make this all work and be come out of it just fine. So that's all I have. Everything else I was supposed to do was canceled, so. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know how that could happen. <laughs> Councilman Hancock. Well, I, I'm in kind of the same boat. and we, We've been directed not to be meeting, so. Uh, and I think that makes sense. I think over the coming weeks, we'll probably figure out new ways to do that with uh, 
electronic meetings, that sort of thing. But I think for right now, everybody's still kind of reeling. Um, I think uh, the only thing I really have to say is it was very good to have the meeting yesterday. I think we had some good information. I think we're in good hands with uh, Dr. G. I've known people with the last name Guy, and so when he introduced himself as Dr. G, it threw me off because <laughs> Dr. G actually delivered me, but it wasn't him. It was a different one. So um, anyway, I think we're in good hands with him. I, I think we've got some good people who are looking into this. I, I guess one of the things I'll remind people of, and this is kind of what uh, Carla said yesterday, um, some folks were wanting to know, you know, exactly who's had this. So we on our own can decide if we've been around them or not. And the reality is there's federal law that makes it so you can't do that. I think everybody's generally aware of HIPAA. And frankly, even without HIPAA, I, I would be worried to have my name out there if I had coronavirus just because of how sensitive, it, sensitive everybody is about it and how scared they are about it. So. I guess the one thing that I can say is, is from what I've seen, that public health is doing their best when they find about any of these cases of just getting into where they've been, who they've been around, and everything. Um, as I understand it, we've had 100 people that have tested, which doesn't sound like a lot, but really I'm sure almost all of them have people that have been around, people that have tested positive already. Um, those, so, those numbers are 105 statewide that have been tested, and 10 have come up positive, so 95 are negative. 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 Which is good for those 95. Um, but anyway, I, I guess the one thing that I'll say is, you know, when we were talking about this yesterday, I walked away from that meeting knowing that we were probably going to have some.